a libertarian businessman decides he can build a better school. The bad ideas that were developed within the public school system have to be thrown out. For significantly less money. They just want an unlimited budget, so therefore they say business doesn't apply. Education is a business. Instead of trying to reform the public schools from within, he's providing a way out. There's two ways you can approach life, voice or exit, and the prime mover is exit. Bob Luddy is the owner of the nation's leading manufacturer of commercial kitchen ventilation systems. He built Captive Air from scratch. Now it has factories in six states and revenues last year of $400 million. So what does fabricating stove hoods and cooling systems have in common with turning out successful people? THR! More than you might think. Luddy got interested in education when he observed that many hires at Captive Air lacked the basic math and science skills to thrive on the job. He became co-chair of a statewide education commission and met with North Carolina officials to voice his concerns. And they were happy to discuss all these ideas. They weren't going to implement any of them. The last straw was in 1997, when Luddy ran for a seat on the local school board and lost. Which turned out to be a great blessing, because immediately thereafter, I filed a charter for Franklin Academy. Today, Franklin Academy is the largest charter school in North Carolina. And the waiting list to get in has about four students vying for every one kindergarten spot. So the market's overwhelmingly signaling we're not happy with the public school system. But even charters are controlled by the state, which Luddy says constrains innovation. So he decided to take a more radical step, which he calls exit. What is voice? Voice is you go to vote, you express an opinion. Exit is where somebody comes up with an entirely new idea. They bypass the existing industry and they get amazing results. So in 2007, he created a nonprofit network called Thales Academy. The goal was to make private education so affordable that many more families had the option of leaving the public system behind. To give a sense of how inexpensive it is to attend Thales, compare it to Ravenscroft, an elite private school in the Raleigh area, where tuition is about $20,000 per year. North Carolina's public schools spend about $9,300 per pupil. At Thales, average tuition is $5,500. That's an amount that many middle-class families can afford. So how does Thales do it? Certainly part of the equation is that it doesn't serve kids with severe learning disabilities, who are expensive to educate. But another major factor is infrastructure. The town of Rollsville, North Carolina spent $76 million on this public school in 2013. Two and a half miles away and a year later, Thales opened a $9 million high school. Though much smaller, on a per pupil basis, the building cost half as much. If you look at a modern day public school, you see the tennis courts and the sports fields. To me, they look more like a sports complex that, by the way, we also build a school in the back of the lot. All we need are classrooms, some facilities for recreation and play, but that's it. Another savings is on personnel. There's no cafeteria and thus no cafeteria staff, no school buses and thus no school bus drivers. A lot of schools you're gonna have an assistant principal, you're gonna have a social worker and a guidance counselor and a school nurse. And those are not things that you are gonna see at Thales. Heather Brame is the head of a Thales Elementary School. I am the reading coach and I'm the math coach, but because we don't have other things on our plate, you know, we don't have transportation, we don't um, deal with a cafeteria, and there are lots of other pieces that are not on a typical administrator's plate that we can make it work. In the public school system, every teacher, they have another person working for the school system. So half the people are not teaching. But Luddy also saves money by hiring fewer actual teachers. The students at Thales are grouped so that everyone in the same classroom has roughly the same command of the material. This way, they can all follow the lesson with less individual attention from the teacher. In North Carolina's public schools, there's about one teacher for every 15 kids. Thales is targeting a teacher-to-student ratio of 26 to 1. Most schools consider small class sizes a benchmark of success. Luddy is proud of having large class sizes because it demonstrates efficiency. In the same way that when captive air can produce more stove hoods with fewer employees, ultimately that savings gets passed on to customers. 
In business, we look at outcome. Did we gain sales? Did we please our customers? Schools don't look at it. We have a big building. We have sports. They're all inputs. Another key to Captivera's success is constant innovation, something Luddy says would be impossible to replicate in either traditional public schools or charters. I always view charters as a transitional idea. So they're far better than the public school system because they have private management, they can be put out of business, there's less regulation. However, there's still regulation and what happens over time, the bureaucrats are going to continue to load more regulation on charters. In North Carolina, the majority of the faculty at charter schools must be state certified, which generally involves taking education courses and passing a licensure exam. You can have a doctorate degree in mathematics, but you cannot teach in the K-12 system. Individuals like myself who are more libertarian, they don't want to deal with this kind of nonsense. And now we're going to write all the numbers on our clock face. You may begin. So if you look at Thales, we don't require licensing. We want to know how good of a teacher they are. But if they have a master's degree and they're not a great teacher, then we don't consider the master's degree to be very valuable. And when a public school has a mediocre teacher, parents are more likely to be complacent since they're not directly paying that person's salary. Luddy says the tuition bills at Thales give families more skin in the game. Anything we pay for, we take better care of than things that we don't pay for. Rocco, okay, so you're going to write two Rocco, so it's right back. As Thales enters its 10th year of operation, Luddy and his team have grand ambitions. There are currently 25 new Thales schools in the planning stages that would extend the network's reach into Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida. When we hit 25, then the goal will be 100. Object of the preposition. And the old educational establishment is gradually declining. And at some point in time, it's going to decline much more rapidly. So one of my goals is to be a shining example of what can be done so that others will follow.